Welcome to the 16th tutorial on beginning Java. Today we're going to look at constructors. Now constructors can be confusing at first, but once you grasp the concept, they can be very useful. So let's take a look at them right now. Now in the last couple tutorials, we defined an object called planet.java and created a blueprint for it. And then we created a program called all planets where we could create objects off of our template. And so we created an earth object off of our planet template. Now what a constructor allows you to do is instead of having to write out this variable here, it allows you to define it on the fly through these parentheses right here. So think of it as a quick shortcut, an easier way to define your variables on the fly. You don't have to type them all out down here. You can just put them in these open parentheses right here. So it's doing the same thing, only it's making it a lot easier. Now this scenario here is useful if you're only defining a few objects. But if you're defining dozens of objects, it makes sense to type the variables out in the open parenthesis because it's a lot easier to do. So think of it like a shortcut. It's an easier way to define your objects much quicker. Now there are several ways to do constructors. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the two basic constructors. And in later tutorials, I'll show you in a more advanced way to do constructors. So let's go ahead and set up our template in addition.java. So if you haven't created this, go ahead and create a class called addition. And here we're going to go ahead and set up our variables. And we're going to have one variable called first number. And another variable called second number. And of course we need a method. And we're going to create a method that just adds those numbers. Now, at this point, if we go back to planet.java, the blueprint we set up over here, you'll notice it's very similar. We set up our variables and we set up our method. So it's the same thing. What's different now is now we'll set up the constructors in our template that we can call from our addition program. So let's go ahead and set up the constructors now. So we name the constructor addition. Now it's important to note that the constructor name has to match the class name. That's the way it works. You can't call this anything else. So we create open parenthesis. Now you might be asking, well, that's what we do with a method. A constructor is a type of method, but it's obviously very different. So it is a form of a method, it's just different. So that's why we use the open parenthesis here. Now we can go ahead and define values to the variables that we defined up here. Now, this is called a default constructor. And this is where you just go ahead and write out the values for all the variables that we defined up here. And we'll run that in a few minutes. But we're going to create the other constructor too. So this is the first constructor. This is the default constructor. And now we'll create one more type of constructor that I'll show you. So we type in the same name. This is the other constructor we're doing. Open parenthesis. And we're going to type in int and l and then int and b. Now I will explain this in a few minutes. This might be very confusing, but I'll explain it in a few minutes. And now we're going to give a value, but we're not really going to assign a value here. And this will be confusing, but like I said, I'll explain this in a minute. Now in this second constructor, we didn't give this any values here like we did in the default constructor. Because in this constructor, we want to be able to assign whatever value we want when we make our objects over here. And I'll talk about that in a minute here. So just soak this in for a minute. The fact that we're not going to assign any values here because we're going to assign them when we create our objects over here. So let's go ahead and create the program here. If you haven't already, create the addition program class. And now we're going to go ahead and create our object. And we're going to call this add object equals, and of course we've seen this before. We're not going to put anything in the parentheses yet. And let's do a system.out.print. Have to capitalize that. And we'll say the addition equals 
And here is where we will call our method that we created back here in, a, in our template. We'll take our object and now call our method, which was get number semicolon. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and run this thing. And we got 30 because it hit this first constructor where we had 10 and 20, and of course that equals 30. Now let's go back here and put some values in here. Let's put in 79 and 21. And let's run this again. And look, we got 100. So it hit this constructor because it realized that values were placed in these parentheses right here, and we had said to do that here. The reason we gave these weird letters here is because we didn't want to give this a numeric value. The object of this is to put whatever value you want in here. So again, you could put whatever you want right here. We could make this x. It's just a placeholder. Think of it like a placeholder for the value. We could say this is x. We could say this is x now. We rerun it, and we get the same result. So again, think of these like placeholders, and that's how this type of constructor works. You're not going to define any values here. So this first int corresponds to this one, and the second int corresponds to this one. Now this also initializes the variables to be used by this objects instance that we are using. And we assign the value right here. But again, we're not going to put in an actual value. So again, this initializes it, and here's where we set the value. And it's used by the instance of this object. Now, let's go ahead and create another object, and we'll call this add obj1. And now we can put in a different value here. Let's go ahead and do another system out. And we will run this. And you can see we were able to do different values right here, and we got the result that we wanted. So that's what this allows you to do. Now we can create as many different objects as we want and put in different values using this constructor. Now you'll notice that we didn't put anything before our constructor. That's because nothing is actually getting returned here. The return values are from the program, not from here. And once again, each one of these objects is using its own instance of addition.java. And more specifically, they get to use their own instance of this constructor and thus get to use their own values here to create a different result. Now before we go, you might have one question. How come Java doesn't throw an error because we're using the same name for these constructors? And the answer to that is pretty simple. Now remember I said the class name up here has to match the constructor name. So how can we name this something else when they have to be the same name as a class name? And the answer to that is the uniqueness of the constructor is determined by what's in here. That is, the arguments that we put in these open parentheses are what determine what makes this constructor unique. That's why there were no errors. Now I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it down here. And you'll see we'll get an IntelliSense error saying, oh, you've already defined this. Because what happened was it hit this and said, oh, guess what? You've already got this defined right here. Sorry, it doesn't even matter if I threw other values down here. Whatever. It's not going to be unique still. So again, it's determined what arguments that you're defining here. And in turn, what gets passed to the constructor over here. So you can make as, you know, we could make another one if we, now let's say we decided to go ahead and do int x, int b, and int c. You can see now that exception went away because now it recognizes, hey, this is actually different. You're setting up three arguments, that's going to be something different. So that's how that works. So that's it for constructors. In future tutorials, I will explain more complex things we can do for constructors, but this is a good start, and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please check out the rest of my Java tutorials on my YouTube channel. Have a nice day, guys.